Hi guys, and welcome to tonight's Music Tech webinar. We're going to be looking at synthesis again this week. This is our second um, webinar in this series. So we're going to look at ADSR envelopes. So once again, as per every week, um, we're going to have a Q&A se session so you can ask whatever questions you want or just get in touch. Um, this will happen a bit later on. You can do this mainly at the moment via Twitter, at Music Tech 101 seems to be the, the best port of call. We're trying out a few little bits of technology tonight, see if we can improve the resolution of the display screen once we get to the demonstration. Um, so let us know how we get on with that as well, so if you like it. We've had a few um, queries in the past, it says the resolution's a bit a bit rubbish once we get to that part of the show. So we're just, we're trying our best and we're, we're trying a few different things out tonight. So um, hopefully that'll be fantastic as well. We can, we can look to improve that side of the show. So without further ado, what are we looking at tonight? So what is an envelope? How does an ADSR envelope work? Subtractive synthesis, shaping your sound with envelopes. Then we're going to do this demonstration followed by the Q&A. So a nice easy one. Should be fairly basic, but we'll look at some, some complex stuff as well. But we're going to try and keep it as, as basic as possible so we can keep everyone following along and, uh, and everything should be cool. So <clears throat> firstly, introduction to the envelope so this is the the sound of science this is where it all kind of shapes mathematically and this kind of goes into physics and it goes into all kinds of other areas as well so just to read off the screen here the envelope can change the contours and the shape of your sound e.g from making percussive sounds to long sustained sound the most common envelope is the ADSR there are other kinds of envelopes and actually ADSR envelopes can be shaped in different ways to kind of replicate other kinds of envelopes as well, which is, is pretty awesome. But this is the most common one. And we're going to show it in its most basic form today, the way it kind of changes the shape of your oscillator. So we looked last week at oscillators, but we've got to keep in mind that it can actually also change or it can be used to route other kind of things. For, for instance, you can use an ADSR on a cutoff filter, for instance, or the cutoff parameter of a filter. And that's a fantastic, all the modulation, the LFO section of the show. So how does this work? It's start, the shape of the envelope starts with the attack, moving on to the decay, then the sustain, and then the release. And it's a time parameter, okay? So when you're looking at this attack parameter, you're saying, okay, how many milliseconds before the decay cuts in, okay? And then it's how many milliseconds before the sustain cuts in. The sustain, however, will stay on until the note is depressed. So if you're playing the keyboard and you're holding down a note, the sustain will not change until the note is let go and then the release takes over. And once again, the release is also done in milliseconds. So <clears throat> the common parameters, okay? And these, these can be different, but these are the, the most common parameters. So firstly is the amplitude. So this is, if I just bring my mouse into play here, this is the height of the envelope, okay? It's thought of as amplitude. So basically it's dealing with volume, okay? So in its most basic layout, when you're dealing with the oscillator and you're thinking about amplitude, you're thinking about how the oscillator changes the amplitude. So if you look here, you can take, for instance, before the note is pressed, you've got no amplitude, and then it takes it up to this point here. And you can set that amplitude setting, and you can also set the timing, okay? So say, for instance, this is 100 milliseconds, that's quite a nice amount and it's going up to zero dB. Now at this point, this could be another 50 milliseconds and it's going down to minus 10 dB. And then it will stay at minus 10 dB until the note is depressed or, or the note is no longer playing. And then you've got another say 100 milliseconds before it goes back to an amplitude of zero. Okay, so that's, it. that's the most basic form of an ADSR. It's just controlling the volume of the oscillator, okay? So we've, we've dealt with that, and it's obviously a time parameter. The attack is how fast the sound enters once, once the actual sound has been pressed. So how quickly it gets from no sound all the way up to the highest sound as it is in this case. The decay is quite nice. This drops it down onto the sustain. You actually don't need a decay for this, but actually it gives you, it gives you this kind of nice dynamic contrast, okay? So that, that's, that's quite a nice parameter to have in. The next one is the sustain. Once again, this is the note just staying at its volume until it's it's depressed or it's no longer pressed. And then the release is how long it takes 
before the note, the note can no longer be heard, okay? So, here's a really nice one. Now, this is from musicsynthesizer.de, and it basically shows an ADSR, or it's not actually an ADSR, it's an ASR envelope here, because there is no decay on this particular one. And what you should be really looking at here is the way the attack and the release changes. And you can see this is just a nice little sine wave, and it's shaping that sine wave, okay? And it's quite a nice little thing. I thought this would be quite a nice demonstration just to show you the way the sound can change. Because you imagine if the envelope wasn't on there, this would be completely flat. It would be at this point here, it would just be completely flat all the way through. OK, so the envelope is giving it that sense of movement and shape within the dynamic range. OK. OK, so we're going to look at the way that the ADSR envelope is routed. Now, as I said last week, they are all different. The way these things are routed are all different. And you can have really ridiculously complex routing for ADSR or the envelopes. OK, but let's just start simple now. This one here is the Tau Electro, and I love using this as a teaching synth. I just think it's probably the best one for teaching, okay? So how the modules work, if you've got oscillator one, okay, and then it moves on to the first initial sound that you hear is the oscillator one, then it gets oscillator two. These two sounds are then mixed together with a sub using this mixer. So it comes all the way along here, does all its bits and pieces, and it mangles all the oscillators together. Then this one comes down to the filter next, so it patches in the filter, and then, the envelope will shape all of these modules all together once it gets here, just because of the way the routing changes. Now, the only, the only area of this whole thing that can be routed differently is this part here, this attack, decay and sustain. Now, this is slightly different. This is just basically saying, okay, let's just take oscillator one and let's manipulate these parameters all on their own, okay? So basically that's how this one works. So just focusing in on the ADSR, we've, we've pulled through all of these oscillators, we've pulled through the filter, and then we're going to shape all of those things together, okay? And this is, a, this is just a nice little way, it's nice and understandable that you can actually see how that, that works. Now, this next one is the Cubase Prolog Synth. Now, this is slightly more different. This has four envelopes. The most basic envelope will work at shaping the dynamic contrast. But you can also route this one. So by clicking on a different envelope, you can then change the kind of destination. You can change the way it, it works. So for instance, if you say, okay, for envelope number two, I want a different shape for the way it works with the first um, low frequency oscillator, the LFO. Okay, so you have four here. And once again, you have the same parameters here. So you have attack, decay, sustain, and release no different there and this is kind of how it works so here's your attack parameter here's your decay parameter there's your sustain and there's your release okay so you can see there's a massive drop from decay until it starts sustaining okay let's have a look at another one so this one here is the the prologue now this gets quite in depth the prologue is a is a fantastic one and a fantastic synth and where it really comes into its own is its routing parameters okay so you have three ADSI envelopes here you have sorry an AD envelope here which is envelope one attack decay then you have envelope two which is attack decay sustain then you have this kind of pulsing time release and then an overall velocity and then you have a similar thing for the envelope three so slightly more complex envelope now this doesn't have a default setting. So you can route this using these parameters here. So for instance, if you go, okay, source for the routing of the cutoff is gonna be um, envelope two. So you can actually patch in envelope two, and we'll show you that in just a second. And then another one could be, okay, we're gonna look at the um, overdrive and we're gonna patch in envelope three there, okay? And so on. So you can really get some really complex shaping and routing going on with the ADSR envelopes to kind of make these really nice sounds, okay? So let's just look at a few different shapes, common shapes. Once again, we're trying to shape things from these very long sustained sound to these very percussive sounds, okay? So here we have an attack, sustain, decay, release. That's a bit weird, this should be release actually, thinking about that. So we've got an attack, we've completely got rid of the decay, 
So it sustains all the way through, no decay. So basically, in order to get rid of the decay for most envelopes, you just turn it to, to zero milliseconds and it's gone. Okay. And then that, now we've got, we're getting rid of the decay and the sustain by just having this attack and release envelope. That's quite nice. I'll show you that in a, in a second. And then you can actually control how fast the attack happens and how fast the release happens. Then we have this attack decay release. So getting rid of the sustain. Once again, just taking the sustain down to zero milliseconds or out of the question is absolutely easy enough to do. And then we have this check general with all of them in. Okay, so we're going to look at a demonstration now. Once again, if you um if you wouldn't mind giving me some feedback, we're going to try out some some new software tonight. We've, we've, We've patched in some extra monitors, and I'd really like to have your feedback about how good the resolution of the, the Logic Pro screen looks. Okay, so we had some feedback in the last couple of shows. They say the resolution is a bit naff, and can we do something to improve it? So we've tried our best tonight to try and improve that. So let me know what you think, if, if it's a thumbs up or if we, if we still need to do some work on that, okay? So we're going to look at the various shapes and the time parameters of the ADSI envelopes for a few different sims. We're going to look at some of these different synth setups and then we're going to try and make some percussive sounds and we're going to try and make some sustained sounds nice and easy should be a bit of fun so just give me two seconds while i flip my screen over to the logic screen okay we're almost there two more seconds and we should be good to go so hopefully that looks a lot better looking at my screen it looks lovely actually so hopefully we should be good to go now <clears throat> Let me just move some of this stuff out of the way. So here we go. So let's have a look at creating some of these synths. So same as last week, we've got um, the ESM, so which is the monophonic synthesizer. Now this one is really strange because it's such a basic synth. They've tried to cut away most things and they've tried to get away with kind of the bare minimum. So it doesn't really have a very intuitive ADSR envelope. In actual fact, a lot of the envelope is is put into either the filter or this volume parameters okay so you have this intensity dial and you have this decay and then you have a decay setting here okay and that's pretty much the the shape of these envelopes you can still get a lot of really good shapes out of it so let me just show you what i've got so far this is a nice percussive sound okay. i'm making some kind of electro bass you might you might get something good out of this so let's turn the intensity up. Oh, no, I might try it there. A very a small amount of attack, a small amount of release, okay? So let's pull the decay up. Let me just turn the play. And there we go. Look, by moving the decay, we're then moving into those more sustained sounds, okay? Okay, so there you go. Once again, it's very basic parameters for your envelope and on this particular synth but you can still you see you can get those percussive sounds and you can get those long drawn out sustained sounds worth having a little play around with i quite like the esm it's not my favorite teaching synth because actually it it confuses my students more than it helps them actually like i said the best teaching synth for me has got to be the um, electro so let's move on to the polyphonic synthesizer here so what we got here, so here's our ADSR envelope here. Now here, I've turned off the decay and I've turned off the sustain, okay? So we're gonna get some nice attack and release. So let's just pull this down in milliseconds, okay? And we're gonna get that percussive sound. Let's pull it up, see what, see what you reckon of this. It almost sounds like a reverse sound, doesn't it? Okay, now let's bring the release up. The release seems to be doing a lot. Hold on. Let's explain one there. Just 
can't hear it. And that's why. Let's just pull this down a bit higher. Here we go, ready? And there it is. And you can hear that now. Do you hear the drop onto the sustain? Now let's let go of the key. You can hear the release. Here we go, ready? Now. Okay, we can make that a bit longer. If I bring this key up, you'll see when I let go of my mouse. Ready? Okay, so that gives you a bit of a good representation there. Now let's pull the decay up. So let's have a high decay falling onto a low sustain. We'll just pull that release down a bit. So a nice fade in and it drops onto the, onto the sustain. So that's a really nice synth. I like that one. Okay, so I mean you can have loads and loads of fun there, just kind of shaping your own ADSR. And once again, we've just stuck with last week's oscillator setup as well. So you can you can obviously change the way your oscillators work as well if you want to try and change that even a bit more. So there's the polyphonic sim. Now let's try the ES1. Let's have a look at how this one differs. <clears throat> so once again, you've got your ADSR envelope there. Um, set everything up like that. So let's just have a look what we've got here. So we've got a long attack, long release, falling onto the sustain again. <laughs> So let's make a percussive sound again. Oh, that's nice. And that's working the way that I would have thought the other one would have worked, to be fair. So it's worth having a little play just to see what you can get. And I mean, I kind of get myself lost in these things because I'm like, wow, let's have a little fiddle with that. But really, once you understand that this is the way that it's shaping your oscillator, and we're just looking at dynamic shaping at the moment, we haven't even looked at shaping for LFOs or shaping for cutoff filters or anything like that, okay? And let's just look at the final one, the ES, ES2, which is a lot more powerful, a lot more dynamic. And I'll just show you some of that routing here, okay? So we've got this envelope three. And let me just work out where this is patched into. Sorry, envelope two is patched in here. Envelope one is patched in here. So as you can see, envelope two is patched into this cutoff filter. So let's see what this does. I just take me a couple of seconds to work this out. I thought I had envelope three patched in as well. I can't see it. So envelope one is actually patched in to the pitch parameter. Hey, can you see that? So that was the attack. Did you hear it? Roll on to that note. And that's because you've got the target is the pitch. So the note that I'm playing here is the A. You can see it rolling onto the A. Okay. And you can see, so the source of that roll on is the envelope one. So now let's have a look at this cutoff one. Let me just turn that off so that doesn't happen again. So here we go. Here's number two. So let's see what this cutoff parameter does. So this is, hold on, let me just. Here's cutoff one, and if you look up here, this says one here. So this is the cutoff value of number one. This is the initial setup. Here's cutoff one, here's my envelope two. So here's my envelope two here. Let's see what it does so far. Okay, and that's just bringing up that attack. 
So see, the initial sound happens right at the beginning. Let's bring it right up so it's a bit more dramatic. And you can see the way the cutoff kind of shapes that frequency and makes the frequency a lot brighter. Okay, and if we just turn that off and do this, and you can see that's basically what it's doing. So there's the, there's the initial setup and it's going, oh, crap. Sorry, it keeps cutting out on me. Okay. So that's what it's doing but it's doing it in a more automated fashion. So let's try that again. So we're gonna go up, and we put a bit of, and let's have a low drop on this. So you can see it fall onto it. So it should go something like this, up to there and then back. Okay, and we can do that same release. So it's, it's interesting. So once you start looking at that, you can see the way it kind of shapes it away, not just dynamic shaping, but it can also do frequency shaping. You can also do panning shaping and depending on the synth that you're using, you can wrap this into pretty much anything. And if you look, so here's my, where is it again? There's my envelope too. But if you click on this button here, you can see all the different things that you can actually route it to is, is actually massive. Um, are we brave enough to try something off target tonight? Let's have a go. So what have we got, we got here? Let's have a look at oscillator level one. That should be fairly basic. So this is gonna just take the level of the first oscillator into account. Okay, so you should see it. It's a bit, a bit boring. Let's just do levels. Let's change it to something else. Let's try the panning option that we said about. Yeah, hopefully, you should hear that change between speakers. So I suspect it will start on the left move over into the right and then come back into the center. Okay. And also let me know what you thought of the, the resolution of tonight's demonstration, because hopefully it was better. That's what we're hoping for. Um, I said we tried a few things tonight during the demonstration side of things, just to kind of make sure that we're improving this show and making it the best it can possibly be. So yeah, send me a little text now to Music Tech 101, just say whether you liked the resolution of the of the demonstration or if you thought it could improve, let me know, that'd be, that'd be brilliant. Um, so any questions, we'll go over to Twitter in a second and we'll just see if anyone's got any questions. We've got a few viewers tonight. It looked like at one point we had four or five, so that's fantastic. Um, next week, we're gonna be looking at filters. So moving on still. So we're gonna start combining and working out how these elements fit together. So from last week's show where we looked at oscillators, this week's show where we looked at envelopes and the next week's show where we look at filters. We're gonna try and kind of build these up so you get, kind of get a really good idea for how synthesis works. So without further ado, let's see if we've got any questions. It looks like we've got a few tonight. We've got six. So let's go new notifications. Here we go. Right, so we've got Harvey. Hey, Harvey, missed you last week. Good to see you back. We've got Harvey says, can envelopes be inverted so the attack starts with a high amplitude going to a low one, then the release goes from low to high? Uh, good question. I've not seen that. I would say probably not. Because of the way the envelope works, basically, you have to click a key to get the note initiated. So you, you'd find that the attack is always gonna be kind of loud. One way you could shape that though is turn the attack to zero. So basically it comes in almost instantly and then do the, with the decay, set the decay longer to say, I don't know, 50 to 100 milliseconds. And then you'll find it go loud and then drop and you won't actually notice the trigger. Okay, so that could be one way of doing it by just fiddling all around with how the how the actual attack and release works. That could be one way of doing it. Um, what else we got? So Harvey says the logic does look really good. Oh, fantastic! I'm so glad. Um, what else have we got? So this is from Tom. Hey Tom, what's the diff between envelope and what's the difference between an envelope envelope follower and envelope generator? Um, not sure i'd have to look at that i'm presuming you're you're not using cubase because sorry you're not using logic gear so i'm not sure where we're getting that information from at the minute what have we got here so what is the difference between envelope envelope follower and envelope generator oh that's a good question 
and I'm afraid I don't know the answer. That is a really good one, Tom. No, I'm not sure. If you guys know the answer to that, though, please feel free to tweet that through to us. What else have we got here then? So Tom says, also, could you route an LFO to affect the factors of the ASR through creating a various em varying envelope? Yeah, you could. Yeah, absolutely. I didn't show you that. Actually. I was going to show that. But yeah, you could basically patch the envelope into one of the LFOs. Yeah, without a doubt. On, on the ES2, you've got a couple of LFOs that you could do that. And if I let me just have a quick look into that list. So I'm looking into the target list now. I'm just going to scroll up and see if I can find the LFO. See if I can patch that into that. Where is it? So you can actually shape it. There it is. So LFO1 and LFO1 curve. So yes, you can absolutely do that. And depending on which synth you're using, that will be slightly different. But yeah, that, that's fantastic. So you can actually get more definitive shape over kind of the way it sounds and the way it kind of works. What else we've got? We've got one more coming through. So if you've got any question, please feel free to kind of chop them around. We're gonna be here for a couple of minutes. I'll check some of the other avenues in just a second. So Harvey says, is that a type of side chain effect linking panning with an envelope filter? Yeah, you could definitely side chain it. And most synthesizers do have the, the ability to side chain. So you can actually go even further. Um, and that's a good question. Maybe in one of our advanced, maybe in one of our advanced tutorials, we'll look into a bit of side chaining some of these effects as well. But I mean, feel free to experiment. Send, send me through any of your tests that you do. I'd love to hear them. Okay, that looks like all we've got from Twitter at the moment. So let's just pop over to the Q and A and see if we've got anything there. No, it doesn't look like we've got anything on the q and a it doesn't look like we've got anything on the um, let's go back to twitter make sure no one else is punching through um well fantastic one i hope you enjoyed that tonight and i'm glad that you guys liked the demonstration screen um i had a feeling that it was going to work out so I'm, I'm glad we'll we'll have some good high resolution screen from now on then so just to finish up then so we're looking at filters next week if you've got any questions in the meantime that you want me to kind of research and go away and have a look at in regards to to filters please get in touch um, also sign up to the newsletter at mymail.musictech.student.co.uk <clears throat> um, and follow us on twitter fantastic stuff so thanks for being with us and i'll see, oh hold on hold that hold on we've got one more that <laughs> harvey almost lost yet there we go um, what does it say? A follower monitoring incoming signal and generates an envelope according to its voltage. There you go. Tom, just answered your question. Thank you, Harvey. That's fantastic. Um, you've been fantastic tonight, guys. Thanks again. And I'll see you next week for filters.